Okay, so let's go with this row, the first row. So I put together the, the first molecule for you, the sodium chloride. Why is the formula just NaCl? <coughs> because when I look at this Na over here, or this sodium over here, I need to find it on the periodic table. Where is it? <coughs> Column number one. And when those things form compounds, what do they do? They lose one electron. Every single atom in that entire column loses one electron. That's why they chemically behave the same. So then this sodium's charge is going to be plus one when it goes into the compound. So if I'm telling you that it's making a compound with the chloride, then I only need one of each. And so that's why it's just NaCl. So what's the formula going to be for the next compound, a combination with sodium and this sulfide ion? So I'm going to need two of the Na's to go with the S, right? This, this Na's charge is plus one. I can't just put them one to one together because if I do, then this molecule, which needs to have a charge of zero, would have a charge of minus one if there was a single Na and a single S in it. So if the Na is plus and the S is minus two, NaS would leave me with what charge? Negative. This whole thing would have a negative one charge still. I haven't canceled out all the negatives. But if I put a second sodium in there, then it's a sodium with a plus one charge, and a sodium with a plus one charge, and a sulfur with a minus two charge, and then it's a wash. So the charges actually cancel each other out, and I've got a neutral molecule. So my formula is going to be Na2S. Why is the formula of the next one NaNO3? Sorry, Destiny? What do you mean I don't need, need a negative sign? This is the charge of the ion. This thing has a charge of minus two. This is a molecule. And so once I've made the molecule, you don't write the charges down. The charges are shown as canceled out. If you, I mean, what did you have? Then you got like. Na2 with a plus and S with a minus 2. Yeah, when you write the molecule, you don't write the charges at all. You just need to make sure that the charge is equal to zero. No, when you write it, they are, they, they're gone. Um, why is the next formula NaNO3? Yeah, this polyatomic ion's charge is minus 1. So then if I had one thing that was plus one, they would cancel out, and that would be it. I would just need one of each of those. So then my formula is NaNO3. How do I know that the charge is uh, minus one? Because you memorize that list of polyatomic ions. There isn't any other way to do it. Uh, you have to have that thing memorized. OK, so the next one. So your list of memorized polyatomic ions, what's your sulfate charge? Charge. It's just minus two. So then I have a minus two for a sulfate, and then the sodium that I'm going to combine with it is a plus one. So tell me what my ratio is. So I'm going to need two of these sodiums for every single one of these sulfates. And the sulfates are what? SO4. SO4 with a minus two charge. Okay, so I'm going to need Na2 and then SO4. How about the next one? This polyatomic ion, what is it? What's the formula? CO3 with a minus two charge on it. Okay, so that means I'm gonna to need to cancel out two negatives, and again, I'm still just using the sodium that's got a plus one charge. So why do uh, these, why do these two look the same, pretty much? The anions are both negative 2 and the cations are both positive 1. So that you can use that same uh, philosophy to understand why this... Oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, this and this have the same ratio. Does that make sense? I only have one sodium in each of those because... 
the sodium has a plus one cation charge, and each of those things are combining with what? A negative one anion charge. That's it. All we're doing is canceling out cations and anions to make sure that the molecule's overall charge is zero. So how about that phosphate? What do we got with that? Oops. Yeah, we've got uh, PO negative three. So if I want to cancel out the negative three charge on the phosphate, I'm going to need three plus one charged sodiums. So then I'm Na3PO4. That molecule's um, might have used that before. The common name for it that you might find in, say, a grocery store or a hardware store is called TSP. Anybody use TSP? All right, fuck you. Um, okay, so let's go back with this. What's the name of this? Sodium chloride. Sodium sulfide, right? Because this one over here is sodium sulfate. So these two things have different names because this is just a negative charge. And if it's just a negatively charged anion, not a polyatomic ion, what do we do to the suffix? Change it to I. So this goes from sulfur to sulfide. Um, why is this one just sodium nitrate? I just say the name of the polyatomic ion. It doesn't matter how many of the polyatomic ions there. I just say the polyatomic ion's name. So then sodium sulfate, sodium carbonate, Sodium phosphate. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. So since there's more than one sodium in the last column, they don't use the tri and di prefixes. When do we use the, the monodi tri up to deca prefixes? Covalent. Covalent molecule. So to name these things, remember the first thing that you need to do is recognize the type of bond that that is undergoing. Is it ionic, is it covalent, or is it an acid? And so obviously not acids, because there's no hydrogens here. And these aren't covalent. How do I know that they're ionics? One, these guys all here have polyatomic ions in them, so that automatically makes them ion. Another way? That's a metal. So since this is a metal, then this must be an ionic compound. OK, so how about this one? What kind of compound, or what kind of substance is silver? It's a metal. So these are all ionic compounds, so we're going to name them as ionic compounds. So this silver's charge is plus one. So tell me how this row right here will compare to the first row. It's going to look exactly the same. I'm just going to swap Na for Ag. Why? They have the same charge. So this row and this row and this row They'll look exactly the same. The difference is I just changed the cation symbol. Uh, the number stays the same. Everything else about it stays the same. I just changed the symbol. So this next one, I'll just fly through this one. AgCl, Ag2S, AgNO3, Ag2SO4, Ag2CO3, ag 3 PO4. So then let's talk about names. What's this first one called? Silver chloride. Silver chloride. But I thought silver was a transition metal, and shouldn't, shouldn't we be telling you what the charge is? It's one of the three transition metals and the three transition metals. I'm looking at my career table. There's zinc. Underneath zinc, zinc is cadmium, and next to cadmium is silver. So even though these three are in the transition metal area, I'm not going to tell you what the charge is because I don't need to because why do I need to tell you what a charge is in a compound? It's variable and these three do not have a variable charge even though they're in the area where we typically have variable charges. So silver chloride, silver sulfide, silver nitrate, silver sulfate, silver carbonate, silver phosphate. Okay, um, ammonium. So that's a polyatomic ion, and what do we have for ammonium? What's the formula? Plus one. So I'm wrong, we actually have another one. This guy's charge is plus one as well, right? So how does this relate to the first two? 
looks pretty much the same, right? There's going to be a slight modification because it's a polyatomic ion, but nothing important. So uh, I need one ammonium to go with my chloride. And so what do I call that? Ammonium chloride. I just always say the name of the polyatomic ion. In this case, it's just chloride, so ammonium chloride. And then NH4, and this is where it's a little bit different. I have to put a parentheses before I write the two down. Why is that? It's two of everything in the parentheses. When I'm looking at this molecule, This is how it actually combines. I've got two separate NH4s. There isn't a, like an N2, H8 with a sulfur connected to it. It's two actually separate particles, each with a plus one charge, combining with this thing instead of a minus two charge. So when I put it in parentheses and then put the two on the outside, then I know that I've got two ammoniums that are separated from each other. Um, OK, so then I'm going to need one NH3 or NH4 here to go with my nitrate. The name? Ammonium nitrate. And then I'm going to need two ammoniums to go with my sulfate. This one? Sorry, Destiny? Where, here? Yeah. Well, this thing's charge is minus two. And this thing's charge is plus one. This whole time, that's all we've been doing is trying to cancel out the charges. That is our entire goal, to make the pluses equal the minuses. So if I put two of these things in here, then I get plus one, plus one, so plus two. And this guy has a minus two all by himself, so then they cancel. Uh, next one. So this one. And this one and this one look the same. Why? So the cation is a plus one and the anion is a minus two in each of those circumstances. So then I'm going to have two of my cations and one of my um, anions. And then my last one here, I've got a NH43PO4 and ammonium phosphate. So let's go backwards on that for a second. If you were given this, this formula right here, how do you know that the name is ammonium phosphate? I just say the names of polyatomic ions regardless of how many of them that there are. So it's your responsibility going the other direction when I'm telling you the name that is ammonium phosphate to understand that this ammonium's charge is only a plus one phosphate is charged to minus three, so that the only way to cancel them out is to give yourself three of the ammoniums. Okay, um, how about this next one? What do I need for my formula? I need two chlorides, and I wrote three for some reason. Because the mercury's charge is plus two, and that the chloride's charges are each minus one, so I need two of those guys to cancel that out. So what's the name for this? Why did you say one? It's two. What's the two tell you? It's charge. So this is mercury two chloride. That's its name. Because what you, need to be know, what you need to know about this is what the mercury's charge is. And from the charge, then you can determine that, in this case, I only need one of them. Or sorry, the, one of those for every two of the chlorides. So how about the next one? What's my formula? HGS. And what's the name for this one? Mercury 2 sulfide. Yeah. So wait, is, it, is mercury 1? Mercury 1 has two mercuries with it. So there's HG2 subscript 2, and then the plus charge is plus 2 because each of them has a plus 1 charge on it. And this is not that special case. Um, OK, so then the next one, what do I need?
We good with that? HGNO3 with a subscripted 2 after the parentheses. I know that the charge on the mercury is plus 2, and the nitrates charges are H minus 1, so then I need two of the nitrates. And the only way to say that is to put the nitrates in the parentheses and say, I got two of those nitrates things with this. And so the name for this? Mercury 2 nitrate. Every single time I give a name for this entire row, I'm going to say mercury 2 something or other. Uh, okay, so why, why is the ratio 1 to 2 here and 1 to 2 here? Yeah, um, there's a minus 1 here and there's a minus 1 here and there's a plus 2 here. So they have the same cation anion ratio. I need I have this cation that's got a plus 2 charge and the anion in those two cases only has a minus 1 charge, so I'm going to need two of those. Okay. So how how are how is this one right here, this mercury 2 sulfate sulfide and this mercury 2 sulfate going to be similar to each other? The ratio is going to be the same because they both have a, a absolute value of two for their charge. So then I just need to write what? I just need to write one of each of them. How about the next one? Same exact thing because the carbonate's also a minus two charge. So HgCO3. So the one with the sulfate, what's that one's name? Mercury 2 sulfate. Every single time I have to say mercury 2 sulfate because its charge could be 2 or 1. How about the next one with the carbonate? Mercury 2 carbonate. Okay, and then the last one, what's the formula going to be? Hg 3 PO4 2. I know it because I've got uh, I know it because I've got an HG with a plus two charge and I've got a phosphate with a minus three charge. So I can't just put one of each of those together because I'd have a leftover negative charge. So right now I have too many negatives, correct? So what if I put another HG plus two there? No, it's not even. This charge is plus 2, and this charge is plus 2, and this charge is minus 3. So I still haven't canceled it out, right? So before I had too many negatives, now I have one too many positives. So I'll throw up another negative. So P, oop. Can you erase or what? Guess not. Undo maybe? So if I put another PO4 negative 3 up here, I added another phosphate because I had too many plus charges. Am I good to go now? Now I've got two too many negative charges. So now what can I do? If I put two more positives on, now I've got six plus charges and I've got six minus charges. So these six cancel out with these six, so I need three of those mercuries to go along with two of those phosphates. Okay, so how is this next row going to compare to the last row? Calcium's plus, two. Calcium's plus two, the mercury was a plus two, so it's exactly the same ratio, right? Yeah. So then I'm going to end up with whatever it said in the last row, it's going to say here. So CACL2, CAS, uh, CANO32, CASO4. CaCO3, Ca3PO42. Tell me where magnesium and calcium are relative to each other on the periodic table. They're in the same column, they're in the same group. So this calcium's charge was a plus two, the magnesium's charge is a plus two. So the magnesium is going to look exactly the same as the calcium and the mercury. 
What about the copper? Exactly the same. Those four rows, the ratios are exactly the same. <coughs> so I'd have a MgCl2, MgS, MgNO32, MgSO4, MgCO3, Mg3PO4, two. And since that calcium is a plus two charge, I'm going to have exactly the same thing. So I'm going to end up with CuCl2, CuS, CuNO32, CuSO4, CuCO3, and I gave you that one. Um, what about the names in this row? I need to say copper 2. I didn't need to say calcium 2 or magnesium 2 because those aren't transition metals and they don't have variable oxidation states. But the first one is going to be copper 2 chloride, copper 2 sulfide, copper 2 nitrate, copper 2 sulfate, copper 2 carbonate, and copper 2 phosphate. How about this aluminum one? What's the aluminum's charge going to be? It's 3. It's in the column that gives it a plus 3 charge. So got a plus three of this one. So then Al, and then how many chlorines do I need? Three of them, Cl3. So if I have an aluminum with a plus three charge and a sulfur with a minus two charge, how do I get those guys to cancel? I need two plus threes and I need three minus twos. Yo. No, it's just no, but it's that's not grammatically correct, I guess would be the best way to say it. There's nothing technically wrong with it, but it's uh it's it's not how it's done. Uh, okay, so then I've got AL and then NO33, and then AL. 2SO43 and AL2CO33 and then ALPO4. Why do I need just one aluminum and one phosphate? Plus three cancels out the minus three straight away. So I don't need to do any uh, finagling with the ratios. How about this manganese? MN, so what do I, how many chlorines do I need? I need seven of them, Cl7. So manganese, two manganeses, and then sulfur, I need seven of those. And then manganese, no, not magnesium. Why is that all of a sudden not erasing? Manganese's charge is seven. So I need to cancel out seven positive charges. What's the charge on the nitrate? Minus one. So I need seven minus one charges to cancel it out. That last one is kind of interesting. What's the least common multiple between three and seven? 21. So I need three plus sevens to get me up to 21, and I need seven minus threes to get me up to 21, and then they'll cancel out. The potassium and the barium, what do these two column or these two rows look like? What does this row look like? It looks like the first one. It looks like the second one, and it looks like the third one, because the charge on the, mag on the potassium is plus one. What about the barium? 
this barium looks like all the ones that are plus two. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, the ratios. So this is uh, KCl, K2S, KNO3, K2SO4, K2CO3, and K3PO4. And the barium is And the uh, the barium here is BaCl2, um, BaS, BaNO3 with a two, BaSO4, BaCO3, and Ba3PO4 two. Okay. Um, each of the columns, there's one shell, uh, shaded one, so um, the first column, I've got this HG, HGCL2. So what are the charges here? Do I know what the mercury's charge is? If I just looked at the formula, I'd say no, because it's a transition metal, so I don't know which oxidation state it is. But can I figure out what the, do I know what the chloride's charge is? How do I know that the chloride's charge is a minus one? It's a halogen. Halogen's charge is a minus one. So if I've got a minus one and a minus one, then that means the mercury's charge must be a plus two. Uh, the next one is uh, MGS. So do I know anybody's charge there? The magnesium I should know because it's in column two, so its charge is going to be um, plus two. And so then the sulfur's charge has to be a minus two just to cancel out. Uh, okay, so the third column, what was that? Silver nitrate, so AgNO3. So the silver's charge is always plus one. Not sure about the nitrate or nitrogen's charge, but what's the charge on the oxygen? Minus two. So if it's minus two, minus two, minus two, that's minus six charge. Then I've got a plus one, so that cancels out one of the six, leaving me with five negative charges to cancel out. So what's the nitrogen's charge got to be? Plus five. Okay. Um, the fourth one is CuSO4. Okay, so I don't know what the copper charge is just by looking at it, but I know that in this case it's a plus two. Why? Uh, no, if I'm just given CuSO4. The sulfate's charge is a minus two, so that implies that the copper's charge has to be a, a uh, plus two charge. So Cu with a plus two, the oxygen with a minus two, and there are four oxygens, each with a minus two, so that's minus eight total. Then I've got two of those canceled out with a plus two copper, and so what's that leave behind? I need six negatives that need to be canceled out with six positives, and so the there's only one atom left, so that means the sulfur's charge must be plus six to cancel that all the rest of the oxygen's negatives out. Uh, ammonium carbonate. So we talked about this last time. The best way to determine what these charges are of these guys is to take the polyatomic ions and separate them out. So what I really have here is um, an NH4 with a plus charge and a CO3 with a minus two charge. So we can do the this side over here, or this uh, hydrogen side. The hydrogens are a plus one charge. And there are four of them, so what's the uh, nitrogen's charge got to be if I want to leave a plus charge? The nitrogen has to be a minus three. So if I have a minus three and four plus ones, I end up having an overall plus one charge, which is what I need. And the carbonate one, what's the oxygen's charge? The oxygen's minus two. This whole thing has to end up equaling minus two. So since I've got three oxygens, that gives me minus six. 
but I need to have two of those minuses left over. So then what's the carbon's charge? Plus four. Okay, and then this last one here, which is uh, potassium phosphate. So I know that the potassium is a plus one charge because it's in column number one. The oxygen is a minus two charge. And so what I have here are three of these guys, and I have four of these guys. So this is going to be, a, this here is a minus eight, and then this here is just a plus three. So then my phosphate needs to cancel out um, five negative charges by itself. So then its charge must be plus five. Why is that not working? That's weird. So then the answer for this one would be just this information. It's not working. Okay, uh, name for this first one, HBr. Hydrobromic acid. So how do I know it starts hydro? There's no oxygen. So how do I know it's an acid? There. Starts with an H. So it starts with an H, so I know it's an acid. I know I use hydro in the name, because there's no oxygen there. So then there's just me trying to figure out what the bromic portion is. So hydrobromic acid for that one. So if I'm using that same logic, what's the, the formula for the next one? H, F, are there any oxygens? How do you know there are no oxygens? Because it says hydro. Okay, so my next one, there are oxygens in it. So its name is not going to have hydro in it. Um, the polyatomic ion is what? Carbon 8. And so that suffix from 8 turns into what? Ick. So then this is what? Carbon ick acid. Okay? So the next one I've got is phosphoric acid. So tell me something about this. It's got some oxygen in it because it doesn't say hydro. And I know it's an acid. It starts with an H because it says acid there. So phosphoric was what polyatomic ion? Phosphate. And the formula for a phosphate is PO4 with a minus 3 charge on it. So if I'm canceling out the negatives to make this a molecule, how many H's do I need? 3. So H3. OK. Um, so there's oxygen there, so this name doesn't have hydro in it. Um, I need to know the polyatomic ion CrO4, and its name is chrome 8. So then it turns into what? Chromic. So chromic acid. OK, uh, acetic acid. So that polyatomic ion is what? Acetate. So then that's CH3COO with like one negative charge on it. And so then how many H's do I need? Just one. And it goes right there. That's the weird one that doesn't actually start with an H. Um, so the next one has an oxygen in it, so I don't say hydro. Um, which polyatomic ion is that? Brome 8. So then it, this becomes brome ick acid so these guys look very similar to each other right the names hydrobromic and bromic so that hydro is really important to say right that lets me know that I'm talking about the one with no oxygen in it as opposed to the one that's just the combination of hydrogens and the polyatomic ion bromate okay so perchloric so it doesn't say hydro so there's oxygen there Chlorines and oxygens, and H's obviously, because it says acid. So perchloric used to be what polyatomic ion? Perchlorate. And the formula for perchlorate? CLO4. 
with a minus one charge. So how many H's do I need? Just one. 